An Unimaginable Truth, A Private Discourse. There are some truths that would never come to a human through logic or intelligence, for they are beyond the domain of logic and intelligence. And it would be fair to say that some of these truths are intuited during the course of one's life, but they are so contrary and unimaginable that man spends his entire life trying to make them untrue. And then there are truths that almost no human alive would dare to entertain, for they are found in the sorts of desert purgatories in which no sane man would ever think to look. A human lives his life according to the way he believes things should be. Society takes these beliefs and recycles them into banners and loudspeakers placed at strategic locales around the world. To live a life based upon a premise that is untrue cannot lead to anything but anxiety and suffering. And to live a life forcing oneself to follow a truth also leads to anxiety and suffering. It is for this reason that arriving at freedom can only happen by way of understanding. It can only happen by way of seeing. Prescriptions, instructions, and how-tos are shimmering mirages that lead one chasing and thirsting for the whole of his life. Man's greatest pains come in the form of relationship, for he operates under the belief that if he gives, he will get. Firstly, he is more drawn to getting than giving. Secondly, he doesn't really get at all. A man will say that he gets indeed. He receives the love and affection from this person and that. But that which he calls love leaves him hungry for more. If something is truth, it transforms the human to which it arrives. If it leaves him thirsty for more, it is not truth. If one's entire diet consists of carbohydrates and simple sugars, he remains in a constant state of hunger. If his diet consists of vegetables, fat, and fiber, he does not get hungry. That which leaves man hungry for another dose is a sugar high, no matter what name one refers to it by. This leads to one of two conclusions, that love is nothing more than empty pleasure, or two, that love is truth, but man does not know the true meaning of the word. The same can be said of God, but one thing is for certain. Man uses both love and God as a wishing well. This is neither right or wrong, but the only reason for its practical importance is that it leads to a life of anxiety and suffering. If receiving love and affection from a human being today leads to a hunger for more love and affection tomorrow, that which one calls love and affection is a simple sugar. That which is a simple sugar is a lie due to the very fact that it does not have the ability to satiate. This implies a truth that is at once unimaginable to a human being. And the truth is this. No human being on earth can on an emotional level give anyone anything. If love received today does not last for a lifetime, the thing one calls love is a lie. I will return to one of the seminal truths of life, stated in colloquial language. Everything is a scam. Everything, in the end, turns out to be untrue, no matter how lofty, spiritual, kind, beautiful, harmonious, and logical it may sound. It will, as sure as wetness follows rain,
turn out to be a scam. If one sees the truth behind the truth, he sees why it cannot be any other way. You see, man functions from a place of self. The self is his center. The self is the hub around which the wheel of his life turns. And this self is a lie. Thus, all that arises from it is sheathed in untruth. I once stated that few will understand just how deep and wide the statement, everything is a scam, extends. Every human on the planet who rose to applaud this statement will perhaps return to his seat in silence when he learns that he himself is a scam. In fact, the self is the mother of all scams, for it has given birth to all the scams in a human being's life. When a man arrives at the genuine understanding that nobody in his life can give him anything at all, he begins to become transformed. He becomes free. And it is only a free man who can truly give anything to anyone, not because he should, and not because it is good or right or kind, for these are all scams in their own right. The free man is the only man who can truly give, because having been transformed by the truth, it is the only capacity he is left with. He is not good at all. There is simply nothing else he is fit to do. For his mysterious inner machinery has been transformed and rewired so profoundly, it is whom he has become. Having seen the unimaginable truth, he has found truth itself. Namaste. Those who wish to apply for the private discourses may do so at www.kapilguptamd.com.